welcome Megan. Uh, yeah, so I'm Megan. I'm the founder of Inkwave. Um, we basically help brands and agencies understand how to use influencers to deliver on their marketing objectives. Um, but I guess our main US, USP is uh, delivering more meaningful conversations and making them more authentic. Um, I've worked in digital marketing for about 10 years. And uh, I worked agency side at global media agencies in the US and UK. And then I also worked marketing, marketing side at Sky. Um, and I kind of saw influencer marketing evolve over the last, whatever, 10 years. Like back in 2014, I was, I was planning blogger outreach for Rimmel. Now it just has like a really fancy title. <laughs> um, but I think over the last couple years, it's become really important for brands. And I've seen them start to put more and more budget into the channel because it is proven to be effective. Um, and then on the personal side, I actually started a parenting blog after my son was born. And it was all about sharing the truth about motherhood. And now that's turned into a community that's about raising awareness of maternal mental health. So I kind of combined these two things together to create Inkwave, which is more about these auth having authentic collaborations. So I'm just going to like talk, do top line, this is what influencer marketing is, how it's evolved, and also some tools and techniques that you can use as a business or an agency. So I guess it would be good to know who has actually heard of it. <laughs> have you guys, okay, cool. And then have you guys actually executed influencer campaigns? Try to, okay. <laughs> so I think it is still somewhat new, but obviously it's using someone of influence on either social media or through blogs to talk about your brand. Um, so why is the influencer economy growing so quickly? The key thing, I think, is social media has become the main source of all news. Um, I think there's a stat that we use our, uh, we check our phones 100 times per day, and that um, out of all the apps, there's four main ones that we go into, and two of them are social media apps. So it's something that we use on a daily basis. So if you're a business a brand, you definitely want to be in that space because people are checking social media all the time. Um, concerns about ad avoidance. Uh, so if you've heard of like programmatic or display banners, um, that was obviously that's a key channel within the, your digital marketing approach. Um, but a lot of people are not really viewing those display banners anymore. And I think it's increased to 46% of people use ad blockers. So that's not really an effective channel anymore. And then even within uh, social, so there's an increased, increased social ad clutter. Um, so within paid social, everyone is spending money in paid social. So like um, if you're trying to target like women 25 to 54, you'll potentially be competing against brands, for instance, such as Mar Marc Jacobs, who spend like 50,000 per month targeting those same people. So um, it's just becoming more and more uh, cluttered in that space. And then in influencers are not only good for promotion, they're also good for content. So you can use the content on your own social channels and your website. And then of course, young, younger people, like you were kind of mentioning before, are, are on social media and they're using just YouTube to watch TV and are kind of going away from traditional channels. Uh, so then why does it work? These are just some key stats. This is from Comscore. Um, so 92%. <laughs> trust recommendations from others. It's actually proven 11 times higher ROI than traditional forms and a 37% higher customer retention rate. And then it's not only like in these stats, but actually the campaigns that we've executed, we've seen that it delivers on both brand awareness and then actually driving ROI as well. Um, it's just making sure that you have the right approach, which I'll talk about. So these are some of the challenges that it tackles for a brand. Obviously, Discoverability is a key one. So if you're a new business, um, being in that space is really great for awareness. But um, engagement, I would say, is the most important, or I guess the best solution, because influencers have an engagement rate of like 10%, whereas paid social, you see around like 2%. And then with display banners, you'll see 0.08%. So it, you'll get, if you use influencers, you'll definitely see a higher engagement rate um, within, yeah, for your marketing objectives. And then trust, obviously, the people who are following these influencers really trust what they're saying and are regularly following them on a daily basis. Um, so aligning with someone who 
is really relevant to your brand is obviously going to build that trust. And then advocacy and shareable, shareable content. So advocacy is kind of, if you're already an established brand uh, and maybe you have a new product that you want to put out there, uh, this would be a good way to engage with new audiences. And then, like I said, um, content that you can use on your social and website channels. And then where does it sit within your overall marketing mix? So I think traditionally it has sat within this awareness engagement phase, but actually there are so many, so many ways that you can use influencers. Um, it's just thinking about like how you can kind of make, create a tiered approach. So using potentially macro influencers that have like over 100,000 followers and then the micro influencers who have like the 10K to 100K range for engagement. And then um, thinking about instead of just like looking at the engagement rate, um, like YouTubers and bloggers can actually deliver on if you wanted to drive, if you wanted to generate emails, for instance, you can use influencers to um, get people to sign up to emails and then use those emails to then put that into your paid social where you can create lookalike audiences and retarget people. So it's a bit more targeted rather than being like woman 2554. Um, so this is just really quick recap. Believe it or not, influence marketing has actually been around for ages. So the first like celebrity was this guy uh, promoting Marlboro cigarette ads. And then obviously that continued through the 50s and 80s. But then in 1994, uh, the first blog came out. It was just a college student. And uh, in 2000, that's when it really began to grow. And there were 23 million blogs on the internet. And then uh, 2003, we saw Google uh, create a product for bloggers so that they could um, monetize their blogs. They could put ads onto the blog. And then finally, 2006, social media exploded. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube all became established globally. And it's kind of the way that um, people thought about influence changed because now everybody could share their opinion. Uh, and then marketers obviously started using social media uh, within their marketing strategy and that viral content became really important uh, and finally we are now in this stage where 2016 influencer marketing was an established channel but now I think there is this kind of authenticity issue where uh, which we're trying to kind of combat and bring back to the idea that it is about relationship driven marketing so matching the brand's values with the influencer's values to have these more authentic collaborations. Um, oh, why is it all messed up? So I guess these are some of the ways that you can uh, create a successful influencer marketing campaign. Uh, the first thing is creating a really great strategic approach. I think a lot of people have tried to use influencers and they'll think, oh, it's really easy. Actually, I can just send a gift. I can DM them on Instagram and send them a gift. That does not work. It will not drive um, ROI. And maybe it will drive a little bit of awareness, but it doesn't work that way. I think we need to think a bit about it more like it's your digital marketing approach. Or if you compare it to like paid search, you're not going to just choose like five keywords and just like randomly put budget into it. You actually have like a str strategic framework around how you're going to use paid search. So these are some of the questions that we'll ask, um, like who you're trying to reach and why? How can we ignite a genuine conversation through social? Um, why should that particular influencer, uh, influencer's audience care about this product? And then um, how can we use influencers to leverage uh, to maximize the other activities? So if you have paid search and paid social, this, also, this works really well um, when you're doing it all together. And then just like a recap, if people aren't aware of these crazy terms that have come out. Um, but micro influencers are people who have around 10K to 100K followers. And then macro is kind of up to 500,000 followers. Uh, and I would say you kind of want to use both, uh, especially if you're new and haven't tested it before. It's good to kind of start with potentially 20 influencers that you want to test and then learn from like a month or two to see who performed the best, who delivered the highest reach, highest engagement, and potentially sales, and then establish long-term relationships with the ones that performed well. Um, 
I think right now a lot of people have been talking about micro influencers are the best people because they're more genuine, they're smaller, and they're more engaged with their community, which is true. But I think that uh, they don't actually drive like sales for your business. They will drive engagement, but um, because they don't have that reach, uh, you most likely won't see conversions from that activity. So these are just some of the pros and cons. Um, obviously, they have a niche audience. It is cheaper, and they drive engagement. But again, like they're not going to deliver on those reach objectives unless you have like 20 micro influencers that you're using at the same time, which can get really overwhelming trying to manage all of those relationships. Um, so that's kind of that. And then um, making sure that you have the right influencer is super important. So making sure that they really believe in what you believe in um, is, is what's going to make your campaign successful. So these are some of the questions that we'll ask, like what past collaborations were successful and why? Have we established a good working relationship? If they're, um, if they're like difficult to work with, you're not going to get the best value from them. So I think a lot of the time people will be like, oh, they have really great content and they have high reach, but actually they're really rude or they aren't collaborating effectively. That will, you probably won't get re good results from that influencer. Uh, and then creative high quality content is really mm -hmm. important. That always performs better in social. Uh, are they respectable in their com community and have they generated strong engagement? So looking at um, what people actually write in their comments. So what are people, how are they responding to the content that they're putting out there, both through their blogs, Twitter, Instagram? Uh, is it just someone being like, oh, nice shirt? Or is it someone that genuinely like, cares about what they're saying? Um, and then what content is their audience most engaged with and why? So um, sometimes there'll be like a fashion influencer, uh, but she actually is talking a lot about beauty. So you potentially don't want to go with her because her audience is responding to the beauty information. Um, so again, making sure that you really do a deep look into who that influencer is and what their audience cares about. Uh, and then these are just a few of the tools that you can use to find out like what people are talking about online um, about in your niche. So write tag and hashtagify are free tools, I think, at first. Um, but you can put in certain hashtags and then see what people are sharing within there. And then BuzzSumo is really good as well. And that kind of shows you information that people are talking about uh, online, so through blog content or through the media. And then I just put Google Alerts, which probably a lot of you have heard of. Um, but this is really useful to look at what people are writing like more of the media, but what they're saying within your industry. Um, and then thinking about the short and long-term goals. <clears throat> so a lot of people use Instagram uh, as the first, right now obviously that's huge and you should kind of be on that, in that space, but um, it's not long-term. So like, you know, the feed keeps going down and then obviously stories are only there for 24 hours. So it's kind of thinking about this, using that, those channels for awareness, and then using like YouTube and blog content um, to drive like ad recall and true like brand uplift metrics. Because um, when somebody searches for, I have Burt's Bees as an example here, but when they search like Burt's Bees <coughs> makeup within Google, the influencer's YouTube ad will come up like potentially at the top of the feed talking about Burt's Bees makeup. So that, that will be there on a long-term basis. So it's making sure that you kind of combine both, both of them. Um, and then looking at the best content. Uh, so this is actually a tool we use. There's a lot of tools out there that are for free. Um, and you can just figure out, you basically put in a, maybe you put in your brand name or you put in a topic around your brand and then it shows what influencers are talking about um, around that brand. Uh, and then also these are kind of the, influencer profiles that we pull out so you can see what topics they're engaged with, what are their most re recent mentions, what hashtags do they talk about the most, what is their social sentiment, like are people positively or negatively responding to what they're saying, and then what other brands have they worked with, and the most important, do they have real or fake followers? Um, it actually gives you a percentage split. Uh, and then this is just an example of like the kind of influencer reports that you would see. Um, again, it kind of gives you all those hashtags and the key stats if you're looking for engagement. 
Um, she's a beauty influencer. And then finally, these are just like the three tips. Um, there's so many things that you can think about, but these are the top three. Uh, definitely be clear on your strategy and your KPIs. So if you have awareness objectives, you want your KPIs to be reach or cost per impression. Um, whereas if you're looking for conversions, then you want CPA, maybe CP as your um, KPIs. And then test and learn first. So like the same as any other channel, test what works for you and your brand first, and then um, establish long-term relationships with the influencers. Long-term relationships are really good because they're going to promote your brand consistently and potentially might even talk about it when you're not paying them. So um, the relationships are so important. And then the final one, match the right influencer to your brand. Like I said, make sure that they truly care about what your brand is about because otherwise they're just doing it for the money and you don't want to work with them. So yeah, that's kind of it. Do you guys have, should I do questions? Yeah. Any questions? It's like a quick run through, yeah. Um, what was the name of the website you said where you could put in the, or find influencers? Yeah, so there's a few, there's like different ones. So one is called Heap, Heapsy, and then there's an, another one called influence.co, and these are just like platforms. I think you have to pay after a certain point, but yeah. Just to, Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much.